Hello guys, it's September and for fall, I decided to read The Legend of Ruth, a Bible story. Plus, they do gathering for the fall. It's a fall story also. Um, it was a long time since anyone had called the land of Kenya. For generations now, it was the land of Israel. In arid countries that lived warm in the sun, beside the Mediterranean Sea, many years ago, Joseph became the leader of the people of Israel after Moses died. Hearing the voice of God, he leads his people courage and bravely into the land of Kenya. They fought fiercely as the Lord promised Joseph that they would run battle after battle until they drove the wicked people of Kenya from their land. Now each tribe of Israel lived peacefully and shared the land. One generation followed another, and a great festival came, and the people of Israel left their farm to the town of village, and they went to Tabakum of God, the temporary temple of Shalom. And they were no kings over their lands, but only great leader were inspired by God, ruled Israel, the guard, the guide, and called the judge. This story is one of the family's traditional original people, and what happened in the day of the judge? Those days they were the men of the city of Bethlehem and Judah's name Elimus. He had a wise and beautiful wife, though named Norma. Now Norma is a Hebrew, meaning sweet one. This was indeed the right name for her. She was a very sweet, pleasant, charming person. It was a pleasure to know her and speak to her. And who men lived nearby and thought of her, that they would do anything she might ask for. But then she hardly even asked anybody any favors. She was too kind and considerate. For a time, her neighbors would come to ask for advice about this or about that. When they were unhappy, she always found some way of cheering them up. She come for a number of time of trouble, and when they did not know what to do, she gave them good advice. And good as her neighbors had said, Norma, which everyone agreed, if it weren't for Norma, houses and sadness, you could surely live in gladness. How dearly her neighbors cherished her. As for Emnus, he was perfect husband for Norma. They were happy together and raised two handsome boys. One son was named Melo and the other Kilon. Bethlehem, the name of these cities, the two Hebrew word means house of bread, for already in the day of judge, farmland was rich and festive. And they lovely spread the farm, whose final wheat and corn made healthy, tasty bread, and fruits and vegetables grew plentiful. In the city of good farmers, Elamel, was known to be one of the best, for he loved his farmland and he worked with care and affection. He returned to his farm brought him plenty of fine crops and fruits, and he always had more than enough needed. At harvest time, he worked and used to forget what his field never went back for it. The whole large corner of his farm he had left untouched for poor. For Torah, um, and every farmer is doing, Elmet gladly obeyed, even so. At every harvest time, many poor people, widow and orphans, swarmed freely over his field, gathering the wheat and corn, and the fruit and vegetables had been left to them, and their hearts blessed him for his kindness, and he was held in high honors. The whole countryside around Bethlehem. In the land of Israel, in the countries of the East and Judge, the wise old men used to sit on the gateway of the city, and people brought before them the due for and arguments for judgment. Now, El Mussi was still a young man, but he was one of the very fine, respectful families because they were always placed waiting for him among the wise elders of the gate. He was always welcome to join them, but he always wished to train him to be wise and judge, the leader of his later years. When people came for trials to be judged, it was the custom to ask the youngest of the wise men to state his opinion first. Then they would go to the next oldest one, and so on, until they reached the elder judge. Last of all, the elder wished that the youngest men would think for themselves, not just repeat what they were to hear from the old judge. At the time, the young Elmish, spelled as an E-L-I-M-E-L-E-C-H, he would say, astound them with his wisdom in strudeness. So, Elmish was highly respected for his city and brought out his two sons, Milo and Kilon, so that when they should fall and push them, the two boys grew happily with their wise and loving parents. To guide them, they see the lack in for nothing. In the land of Israel, sometimes it happened, hardly any rainfall on the weather. And when it happened, one year, there were a few crops in the summer, and food was not plentiful, but there was still enough to eat. However, no rain fell in two years more, and they used to be famine people began to starve. 
time came when the such disaster fall in Babylon for two years, scarcely any rain fell. The steaming rain dried, and the well dried up, the wheat barely did not sprout. People opened their storehouses and ate up all the food stored away during the good years. They did not suffer during the first year of drought. But the second year of famine began. Nowadays, there was just a great hunger for one country food and blood from the countries. But one day of the judge, this could not be done yet. There was for no crowded road, as we know. Every car was filled with far between people either carry their own goods or their back, or else they would load them with donkeys. Centuries before, there had been another famine in the land. Jacob's ten sons had been forced to take their donkeys and bring food from Egypt. Famines were indeed very serious in those times. The people lived were in danger, and now that the people of Bethlehem suffered the pain of hunger, even almonds in the valley, the very sad things happened. His children became very weak and ill. The wise not the children of Bethlehem. They were all thin and hungry. Old time Norma was very good and the boat of mother began to worry greatly. One early morning she walked out of Bethlehem and went to the city of Tika and came back with a, with a wise old woman. The wind flew with them like a two point and they lay too weak to move about much. They must eat more, she said, or else there may have tragic ends too soon. And Norma heard her heart say, Do you know we had hardly any food now in Bethlehem, my dearest friend? And you must take them to a place. There is food. There is food, my daughter, was soft and feet, and there is such a place now in the whole land of Israel. Surely there is a bitter hunger everywhere. There is food beyond Jonas in the land of Mo and Moby. For the winged woman, go there with your children. Eat food plenty. They will grow up and marry a good time. Mama wished to pay the wise woman for her advice, but the old wish, the old and wished lady refused. Do what I say. In God for time, he will come back from Moby. And all good well with you. And remember my words. Then God of Israel bless you and all in work. Old oh, they bent, she went away. When Elmas came home that day, Norma told him what all happened. The whole night we grew far and far. He couldn't decide what to do. In the morning, he went to the gate of Bethlehem and asked the elder, Your children are ill. You must do everything you need to make them healthy so that they should grow up and take their place. Go with your blessings. And what about my land? Or can I come back and be waiting for you? If we rent it for anybody, all the money we'll earn will be put aside for you until you return. Elmo bowed the elder and thanked him, and he wished him farewell, then in turn wishing him good speed. God speed, I mean. Went home, and the rest of the day, he and Norma made their preparations. They took the little flour and oil they had, the little packets of seeds for shower, and all the silver and gold that was left to them. Before dawn next morning, they set out on their journey. The way was not too easy. First, they had to go eastward down Jordan village, where Jericho once stood. Then they had to cross Jordan River and make their way to River Unknown, or the land of Moab. It took them a long time, but they were weeks, really. Strange enough, the two boys seemed to grow stronger in the journey. At last, they reached the land of Moab, came from King Agur. King Moab received them hospitality. He made them rest for a few days and gave them plenty of food. This port in the land said, If you came from Bethlehem, you should. You are good farmers. Till the soil well, and my people can be in from you. Sure enough, we found plenty to do. In his new plot of land, he became even more busy than he had made at home. He saw the seeds they had brung with them, and due course, if he ate a hundred measures crop, the Norma worked to gather with them. Now the two boys grew strong and healthy, and they helped their fathers in the field. They helped their mother at home, became friendly with all the children in the neighborhood, and at last their father had little time to teach them Torah. To a home in Bethlehem, he had taught them Torah, regularly without fail. Long time passed wandering, trade me him that the dew had ceased in the land of Judah. The rain was falling every winter, and they were ever promised plentiful harvest, but they could not return in the land of his fathers. He was under a word of the king Edgar, who had been so kind. He felt that he must stay in Moab for a while longer in order to teach the peasants and farmers he knew all about farming. So they started in Moab, didn't go back day by day. Elmas grew in his field and tended his garden. While sons helped him, he would send them home early that day since they were still young, but he always went on work by himself. By the time it came, he did not return. Elmas always came home in the sunset. Now, 
before he died and there was no sign of, I cannot understand what happened to your father. No matter son, it's already so dark he, he's not returning. Was everything all right with you and you left him? Yes, mother. Father sent us home. He always does, he says, more work to do. He said he had plenty of several coins to get. So I went home. No one was excited. I'll be right back. Part two, my friends. Let's continue on with the story. At first, she was upset because the evening meals were going forward, but presently she began to worry about her husband in earnest. The two boys also said something was wrong. They began to be afraid, but they said nothing. On our and worried their mother, I shall go to the field and see what's keeping your father. The boy laughed. Let us go with you, said her two sons together. Good. We shall take a torch, and now we can see where we go. As she prepared this torch, light and torch, for they were not easy those days, but at last they had their lids and burned. By the place and night into which they left their home and made their way to the fields. As they walked along, they turned it this way and that shouted, Amos, Amos, where are you? Where are you? Father, can you hear us? There was no answer. From time to time, they could hear a faint echo from the hillside. That was all. And Norma was very frightened, quivering with much alarm. It came Amos Field, now raised the torch, began moving here and there, and her husband by name. Suddenly, she saw his body laid between the roll of fields. She ran to him, kneeling down and touching him. He did not move. In one hand, he held a sack of seeds. While the other hand, part. Norma shook his shoulders. He did not move. She ran. She ran to the well nearby and brought him a jug of cold water. Quickly, she sprinkled some in his face, and still he did not move. Norma was no longer alive. Then Norma began to weep quietly, while her lips moaned. God has given, and God has taken away. May the name God be blessed. Her two sons, Sunny Moses, beside her, weeped helplessly as they stood for a long while. That night they stayed beside their dead in the morning. How did he Oh, how sad. Her father, Emmas, had passed away. Ingle, the king, more treated them very kindly. Stay here until your sons have grown to manhood. For well, it will be much more easy for you to return to Bethlehem then. So Melhan Kion continued to farm the land, which their father had received from King Elbush. Norma kept the house for them. Much as she craved for her dead husband, she never let her son see this, but looking after him, the dear devoted mother she was. The years went by, and boys they grew into the stripless stripper. Strong men. They became fine young men, tall and handsome, laughing and wise, and whenever they went, they were popular, just as their father's husband. When the time came for them to wed, they married Ruth and Orpah, two beautiful sisters who were also princesses for their daughters of the king. Yes, their daughters of king. <laughs> Wild blood rolled in them. They were lovely and graceful girls, worthy daughters of the king, enchanted all who saw them, and they loved not only their husbands, but also Mama, their mother-in-law. They worked with her at the house, and in the garden they spun and wove, sewn together. All things women folk in those days were deep. For the first time in many long years, her husband's death, Norma felt that they were no longer alone, but together, their mother, two young couples, a sorrow struck again. Maha was again wished away. It seemed that the illness of their childhood had returned. And Norma and her two daughters in law nursed them and cared devotedly, and grown to a wise man and wise woman, but all availed. The brothers worshipped. And before they both turned their way to the father, now no man is better than these. She swept sorrow. Not only she, the widow herself, but her two young daughter-in-law, and also widowed. Until they stayed with her and tried to comfort her, they could not make her grief any less. And whenever they spoke, she thought their sorrow was well grown. The grief brought an older woman with two young ones being close together than they had been. Or I tried to pursue them to return to their father's home, but they refused. They wanted only to stay with her and look after her. Since she had no one else, at last one day, Norma decided that she must not be burdened to them. But she made up her mind and had come for the return to Bethlehem. Why should I stay here? We came here so that our two sons should be restored health and strength. Not only did they die, but their father perished even before they did. If I stayed here, you know, these two daughters in law of mine will not leave me, but they ought to marry again when their grief is over. I return to Bethlehem, I, see, I shall be among my own people, and they will free me to marry again. My dear children, I am sorry that I have no gifts to leave you now. When I go, I will return to my own city, for I love you as if you were my own daughters. 
you are our mother now, answered two girls, and if you and if you go away from here, we shall go with you. But not do not hurry. Wait till the harvest season comes. Then we'll be all together. The day in summers passed slowly by the warmth of the sun. The harvest season came, and Norma, two daughters in law, Opa and Ruth, gathered their men and belongings and set out their journey to the land of Judah. And they all walked together in silence, each of them busy with their own thoughts. They walked down the mountain of Mole and the river of Allen, and they crossed the flood. Norma stood, still turned to a young woman. My dear daughters, you have come quite far enough with me. Now let us part, love. I shall go on my own city and see my way to me. After ten years, for I went away, and now I return empty. Who can say what I must find? You go back to your own home, to your mother's. Begin to live anew. And may God bless you. But the two young women refused to leave her. No, mother. Now we have left home to our own mothers, who bore us. We are your daughters. We shall go with you whenever you choose to go. To your very land we shall go with you, and was deeply touched, but she was not agreed. She looked to beautiful young women stand straight upon them. Surely she thought they could find themselves husbands among their own people. They will bear children and be happy. Why should I share her misery? It was not right. Go along to your home, my dear children. Do not come with me, for I am a poor old woman. I have nothing to offer you. Why, if we were young, I might marry him and have sons. Then may I could ask you to wait for my sons to grow up. Today will marry you. For that is the way among my people. When the man died without children, his brother married his sister by a first wife. But even if I were younger and I could have children, how could I ask you to wait for those children to grow up and marry you? I would be an old, wailing woman yourself. In any case, I'm too old to have any more children. As I said, now it's far better for you to return to your land and forget me. So saying, I'll embrace Orpah and Ruth and kiss her and bless them as they both soon follow happiness. As she spoke, wept, the two young women wept with her hands, but still refusing to say goodbye to her. Norman went on and turned them, and begging them not to waste their young lives in content. And at last, Lopa gave way. She kissed her mother and walked and turned around and walked back, weeping in the road she had come. She was friends with her mother, as Norma had a pleasure, but Ruth stayed where she was. No matter what might happen, I beg you, my dear Ruth. Opa has gone back home. You go with her. Ruth, however, was framed. Dearest mother. That's Anne. I'll be right back, guys. Dearest mother, do not try to pursue me to leave you. I will stay with you whenever you may go. But you should go with me. But why, but why should you go with me to my land? Protests Numa. Nami. There you will be not be able to worship your God, worship your God. You will be far away from your family and your own people. Ruth would not change her mind. She simply answered, Why should we talk any more, dearest mother? Let us continue on our journey. My dearest daughter, Nami, said Nami to her very seriously, If you come with me, you will leave behind your whole life which is so familiar to you. And what is heavy burden, you will be taught upon you. Our God has given us many commands, and they're not all easy to obey. If you come along with us, it will become your duty to fulfill with many commands in God's Torah. You are not used to them, and they will seem as hard to you. Why should you take this burden upon yourself? Then Ruth burst out speaking from a very heart. Oh, my mother, do not try and make me leave you. Go back whenever you go, I shall go. And whenever you stay, I shall stay. Your people are my people, and your God is my God. When you pass away and die, they let, they let me perish too. They let me be buried for you, Lord God of Israel. Only death shall separate us. When Nami heard this, she knew there was nothing more to say. For the fullest time in those lands, there was nothing hollow for a person in the grave of her forefathers. Ruth no longer wanted to be buried near the grave of her forefathers. She had sworn by Lord God of Israel not to condemn the God of children more. Norma embraced her again and said, Let us go, my daughter. And they went to journey Jordan River and land of Judah. As they walked together, Nami prayed to God to take care of her daughter in law. When the young Ruth took her first step on a new path she had chosen, she prayed that Ruth might find happiness among Nama's people. So I can't see her name very well. Nami. Right. City of Bethlehem. In the land of Judah, the two women walked to the plain of Jordan and up the mountain of Judah 
opportunity to leave behind their unhappy past and walk into a future they could not foresee. The Mount Crom Plain, they passed the Dead Sea, and half man, they left hearts today. The scene of the wildflowers filled the air with all around their flowers, every color of the hill, and they know the shepherds playing their fruits, their flutes, and the flocks, those white newly washed sheep swam around the hills. It took them a long time to climb for the plain of Jordan rivers, the high foretell, table lands of Bethlehem. But at last they found themselves in the standing corn of the farm of Bethlehem, already ripped with yellow either side of the plot. The barley borrowed heavy beard leaves, ears ready for harvest. All the wheat sprayed gently spring breeze upon here and there. The first harvest, first harvest were moving to the field. Nami and Ruth began to move quickly. The Mount Rest, Hype and Saw of Bethlehem. Before them, it was all Nami could do to keep from the weeping, the weeping, lost her husband, all that. Oh. Uh oh. Uh, give me a moment. Write a message to someone. Let's continue, shall we? Let me could keep. I hear it. What can what can have happened here? It's ten years I went away, so rich in my family. Now I come back to poor, except for this beloved girl. As for Ruth, she gazed upon her assembly, one of curiosity. As the gate waved, they saw a large number of people assembled. Why are there so many people here, dear mother? They must have gathered all to celebrate the Oma Festival, answered Nami. For as long as anyone can remember, it is custom in the land of Judas to name barley harvest to come here by the cattle in Bethlehem. From all the villages in the year of birth, <coughs> in order to do they harvest to gather on the first day. But as they came close to the gate, the gate what Nami and Ruth saw their Jamming that people gathered, they were they were they were not rejoicing at all. On the contrary, they were weeping and lamenting. She was such a good woman," said one housewife to another in the crowd. "Yes, she had a kind heart. There was nobody as good as she was in the land of Judah. She looked as if a poor orphan, widowed widow. She gave them everything they needed. She signed the old man to another. Yes, indeed," said the second. Now that she had passed away, whom can we trust to help the poor or needy to the city? Nama heard a talk going through all the crowds, but she could not discover about who they speak about. She turned to one of the women and said, Please forgive me. I have just come into the city. I cannot understand what is going on. For whom the people are lemon like? Today our city has lost a rare soul. A true mother of Israel, the wife of Gozo, our judge, has passed away. So noble, so we shall not find the whole land of Judas, the wife of Gozo, the son of Simon? asked Nama, taking to leave that. Indeed, he has both as the son of Simon. Who is judge in mean, our city? Why is he a brave and worthy man? Said Nova to the wife. He is a member of the family. My dead husband, Ernest. 
asked her very first child and stared her in her eyes. She led her daughter-in-law after her and made her leave home as they walked along the loop and others. Suddenly, people recognized Nami. Nami. Weep and started astonishment as they began to whisper to the other. Can this be Nami? They asked. Can this be Nami, the wife of wealthy Amish? The beautiful woman who was so happy. Her face has changed. How sad her eyes are. The news that Nami had returned to Bethlehem spread swiftly within a few moments. She found herself surrounded by her many old friends. They could hardly believe that this woman was the same wealthy and beautiful Nami who had left Bethlehem with her husband and two sons only ten years earlier. Now her face was dark and a wink was soft, but her, her dress was black and warm and almost red bared. Her former neighbors gathered and welcomed her and asked her how she was, but there was only saw the great change of appearance and style. Can you be Nami? Do not call me Nami. The sweet one said she was sad. It's not the same, not the name that suits me any longer. Call me Mira, the bitter one instead. For bitterness and suffering are my portion. I left you when I was rich with my husband, two sons, and now I have come back empty handed. All I have with me is this precious soul, my daughter in law Ruth. She was the wife of my younger son, Kilan. She perished, the young woman. She told her neighbors how Ruth had refused to leave her, how she forsake her homeland and her mother's house because of her love and devotion, and her comrade Nami drowned up them. All of them wanted to hear the tale. From the first moment, they felt fond of Ruth and were friendly toward her. It was easy to see what pure good soul she was. Nami was glad to be home again, but she was without food or money. On the first day after her return, neighbors helped her in every way they could. They remembered how good and helpful she had been through the bad times, when things had gone well with her. But Nami could not bear to accept gifts from any longer. Ruth also felt that she must do something for her mother-in-law. She knew that Nami was old and could not work and love her own needs. She started to seek out for some way to provide for herself a mother-in-law. One day she said, Nami, the harps has started at last. I think I should go to the field and gain corn and grain for our food. As for the poor girl, Bethlehem, they're doing. Nami felt very sad that we said that. It would be gone by the day when her husband, Elmas, had suffered his fields, and the widow and orphan sat as poor strangers to come there to gather themselves and left behind for them. One commands, she remembered how Elmas had always said that in the corner field, which was left to the poor. Could often be too small, but could never be too large. Now the wheel of fortune had turned. Her daughter in law Ruth wished to go to the field and stranger with all widows and orphans to gather food for both of them. But she understood that at last that there was no one other way. She had not even spake a flower of her home, nor did she have money to buy crust or bread. Since you must go, my dear daughter, I hope you will go to Field of Bourgeois, as he is the kingship of my dead husband. Bethlehem was still asleep when Ruth rose up to go. It was only before dawn, not every bird was stirring yet. She washed and put a simple garment and went out on the fields and by this great farm belonged to Buddha, who had just lost his wife. But Ruth did not know this. She simply went to the field and asked the harvest if she might long grain left behind for the poor. They gave her permission. And so from the very early she followed the harvest, picked up every urge of wheat. They tied up the shivs and ears and left for the poor, the orphans and strangers. She did not speak to the harvests as other Chilean women did. She did not laugh or make jokes like the others, for she was intent on what she was doing. Her head was bowed on the ground, her eyes looked only for ears and scattered the field. She was careful not to disturb the harvest at work. As soon as she the harvest noticed her modest behavior and thought that she was not the same as the other girls there, who kept laughing and singing and interfering with the work of the young man. He quite began asking people with her who this young woman this might be, so different from the others. Before long, he found somebody who could tell me what he meant. Before noon, Rose himself came to the field, both as a farmer who loved to work on lands, enjoyed watching how the harvest went. He was kind of a person who treated his works for a good friend. Good aid you. God aid you, he greeted from them, and he arrived and they answered him respectfully. The Lord bless you. Then boy took over his field and under the work of a young reaper, seeing how many 
girls who were green who gleamed behind them. His heart rejoiced. Then this year was among the plentiful crops and not for the poor and needy. As he looked around, he noticed Ruth, who she was so different from the Bethlehem girls, not only in her modern behavior, but also in her clothing. I like the maiden because she was wearing a white linen dress with an embroidered belt. On her head was a kinship plush bag that completed her cloak thread. She had no pink pit on and a roll of beads on her arm. About her neck, gave her long until she was very looking and her eyes met his. A very beautiful maiden, he thought himself. He went to his sea of reaper and asked him, Who is that girl? The graceful one who dressed differently from the others. She came from all, she is the daughter in law of Norma, the widow of Amsis. They came here together from Lana Moon. Has she been gleaming in the same field for a long time? Since early this morning, she's very delicate, taking care of gathering one only single ear. They are left behind when the worker buying the ships. Forbes went on and asked him questions, but we completely learned the whole story how she left. Her home in a country a moment ago with Nomi, her mother in law, whom she loved so much, who ever known about her, spoke of her glowing praise, so sweet and gentle was she. And her that he himself went over the roof and spoke to her, telling her who she was. He politely told her that she did not need to go gathering corn and wheat in her fields. Here she was to be treated properly in a friendly fashion. While some among people might be rude to her, I have also told my men that when you are thirsty, you should drink from the water which is drawn from the wall. Ruth bowed down to him and thanked him. Then, why are you were treating me so well? After all, I'm a stranger from a foreign land. I was told how you treated your mother-in-law after your husband passed away, how you left your home with your father and mother, even the land of your birth, accompanying Nami to a strange place, to a strange land. You have had it very finely. Now that you have come among us and only honored to be one of us, it's the only property you should treat me as one of our own people. God will surely reward you for what you have done. I thank you from my very heart, he said. Your gentle words comfort me and encourage me very much indeed. The boy said, the boy said to her, as he was about to leave, when the harvest stopped work and eat, come and eat with us. So when time came to leave the work, he had knew Ruth went to the other side of the harvest. The boy himself shared his bread with her and gave her a roasted barley grain. Ruth ate his share, and sometimes he put away for Nami waiting at home. After they ate, Ruth rose and thanked him, and went back to gather to drop an ear of the grain before. But Bullock gave his men order that they would let her grain among the standing corn as well. And he said that, to tie the sheep together, they should always leave a few stalks for each bun on the ground for Ruth to come to herself. So Ruth continued to gather grain, steadily and modestly, to the very shadow even in fall. And then be out of the parish, she had quite a large measure of barley and corn. She walked shifted to her mother in law's home and gave Nami all that she had. <sighs> I love reading. Yeah, it's fun. This is my favorite story when I was a child. And one moment. I'm back. Now let's continue on with the story. Sorry it took so long. But I had to write a message to someone of great importance. Let's begin. Had gathered, then she looked down over her bag at good food that she had saved from the meal at noon. 
Nami could scarcely believe her eyes when she saw how much her daughter-in-law had gained in a single day. And a whole field did you find somewhere together? She asked in her May bless and fall on the owner of the field who allowed you to gather all of this food. Ruth told her all that happened to her during the day. Her generous one had been so well. He had treated her. And how he invited her to come all the way to this field until the end of the harvest. As Nami heard the tale, she rejoiced and thanked God in the heart, sent Ruth to the field of Borgia. The king man of the departed heaven, oh, that man be blessed for being so good and kind to us. You will be very welcome, Ruth, my dearest. If you take his advice and go to his field and gather grain, do not go in the other fields where you may be rude to me, if you are a stranger. Every day, Ruth went out to the king of the field of Borgia until all the barley and all the wheat had been reaped in the harvest. All this time, Bush and his mirror, his man, were kind and friendly to her, and she was deep in thanks to the God of Israel. How kind of him is. The hopes of Nami. Since Bush was so kind in every way to Ruth, Nami began to hope and dream that maybe he has taken such a like anew that he would wish to marry her. If only that could happen, she thought. Then her daughter-in-law would receive a good reward for all of her own kindness and goodness. Once again, Ruth would live happy life she deserved. For Nami was so excited to see Ruth living happily, she knew very well great and noble things Ruth had done for her. She had left her home and family behind, because she did not wish to abandon her old and tired mother-in-law. And after she came with her in the land of Judah, where everything was so strange to her, where she knew nobody but nobody but no but Nami, she now went to with them and eagerly gathered the game in the fields of strangers. Should I really know I have good food to eat? How much Nami wanted her to be happy. Any mother would want their child to be happy. Even I know that. I'm still waiting for a time to meet my boyfriend and get married. Not one day. She felt the time had come to this good sweet girl receiving her reward. Nami kept thinking. On the last day of the harvest, Nami said to her daughter in law, You know that bush will end up harvesting that very day today. How would Mary Ruth may dear not yourself with sweet smell and bosom, and put your beautiful dress in the evening, go out and meet Bosch and the end of his work in the field, and see what he has to tell you, and may God bless you, so that you should find favor in his eye to Bosch. For Nami wanted very much that Bosch should see how beautiful Ruth was when she was always from the heat of the sun, and thus the field, she hoped that he would wish to take her as his wife. I shall do what you tell me said Ruthly gently. She bathed and dressed herself in her best garments, and when the evening came, she kissed Nami and went off the path, leading down the field of boys. As she went, Nami stood there, gathering from the entrance of her home, sending a lovely gleam after Ruth while her lips whispered, Bring her home a young fortune. Nami had planned while well, has chosen the right hour that Ruth walked along the road to greet. The old goose. All the still the evening shadow. She met Bush for quite long. He diligently saw her so radiant and fresh. He greeted her and began to talk to her. And before he talked very long, he asked if he would, if she would become his wife. And Ruth was very happy, and she agreed. So Ruth rather joyfully to Nami. Her mother-in-law told her of her great happiness for every more than her mother-in-law could know. To love and brave, to love and brave, generous boy, she was all the happiest to know that he was the kingship of her dead husband, Kion, and his father, Ilmus. For like her mother-in-law, she also wished that any new husband who might marry soon belong to the family of Ilmus. For Nami had happiness not no bound. Her prayers had been in vain. Her greatest hope was to be fulfilled. Another few days, Bolt was busy visiting on the last deed of her husband. As soon as he was free to attend to other matters, he went to the gate of the city and let the elders know his wish to marry him, to ask if there was a favor for him. But that was the custom in those days. The elders prayed Bolt for his plans. They liked the greetings, but Ruth was a poor maiden from her old home. And Bolt, in the goodness of his heart, wished to establish the house and family in low together with her. The elders thought this was a wonderful, with a hopeful favor. Who, with happy hearts and wound, turned home and made his profits for the wedding. 
first, he sent Ruth many precious gifts. Jewelry adorned herself with materials to sew into a new dress, and Ruth happily began her preparation. She sewed her wedding dress and other lovely garments with her own hands, as Naomi helped her joyfully with a full heart. The wedding was held, and a few days later, Ruth became the new wife of Booth. From the point on, the land journey began. Many friends, acquainted with Booth, came to the wedding feast. All of them brought rare precious gifts and gave them the happy pair with heartfelt blessings. The plans of Booth could be hard. From being taken the roof of his kingship as his wife, to being doing the same in the name of Alice, so that should never be bothered out through. <laughs> These young ones drew them, drew them black and red. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, sorry. This was a uh, book that someone had, and I got it at Goodwill, and someone actually did that. Bitch, you know, kids, red and black. My baby colors. First, let me just blow my nose. Oh. Now. Now, back to our story. The daughter-in-law of Elmis. The family of Elmis and, no and Nami would now continue. As for Ruth herself, there was no end of praise, the kind word, or gentle character. All of beauty and charm. Bethlehem had not seen a wedding like this for many years. Everyone's happy and happy for all was Nami. And the kings of Ruth divorced indeed said that they are married and lived happily ever after that they went on gentle acquaintances, came peaceful lake of summer days, but happened increasing due to the course Ruth gave birth to their first child, a handsome, healthy baby boy. Nami her Nami overflowed with joy that the baby was born, and she felt just as if it was her own grandson indeed took the change. Charge of him as he were his own blessing, but she carried him along with her, nursed him, and just looked after him. She brought him love as a mother loved her own child indeed. She might have thought that the little boy had two mothers, not one. The mother of Bethlehem had always been fond of Nami, and now they blessed her with congratulations on the birth of her grandson. They praised her daughter in law, saying, Who this far better to you and seven sons could have been? The little boy and all of us, he being father of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His father of David. Who was David? That you should know without being told, since he was one of well, you know, the greatest king. If you don't know, you can read about him in the Bible. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Sorry it took so long, but I had business and abilities and all that. So, this is the story. I hope you guys enjoy. Story. Next story will be Halloween theme. <laughs> you know I love telling you ghost stories and that. And also other things. Also, I want to give you guys some news. The reason why you haven't heard of me telling you any ghost stories is because, well, a lot of paranormal stuff has happened to me over these past years, and I can't tell you all the details. Let's just say I've been dealing with a lot of paranormals. Dark and light, so I can't really tell you all my stories anymore. I can't tell you my experiences because I'd rather not. Some of them have become dangerous. So, yeah, that's all I can say. Hope you guys enjoy the story. Oops. <laughs> oh, I have a lovely day and pleasant day to you all. And good luck to you who you love. And marry one day. Thank you.